Hi, my name is Tim Long. I'm the CEO and founder of New Life Medical Center. It's a primary care clinic and BioFit 20, which specializes in longevity, health, and fitness. And today I'm going to talk to you about how you can truly, really, raise your testosterone levels naturally. And if you're on testosterone therapy already, how you can lower your dose. Uh, because if you can lower your dose, you're going to lower any possible side effects. And the higher you can get your testosterone level and the lower the dose, the better it is for you. So I'm going to talk to you about eight different things that can actually raise your testosterone levels. It's been proven through research. But the last four, especially the last one, is the one that's going to be, really be effective. Um, first one I want to talk to you about is fat, animal fat. You need to get enough animal fat in your diet. And if you're not you are going to lower your testosterone levels because your body takes cholesterol, which is from animal fat, and it turns it into testosterone. So you need to eat good, clean, healthy animal fats. Number two, supplements. Uh, I don't believe in a lot of supplements because most of them are very marginal, aren't effective. They just sell it and sell the hype and it doesn't really make a difference in a person's life, but some can. And there's research behind this. And the first one is zinc. Zinc with pushes out the estrogen and allows the testosterone in so if you're deficient in zinc and you get your levels back where you need to be it can help your testosterone levels magnesium has been shown a little bit to increase testosterone there's a lot of other benefits from it as well uh, vitamin d is a pre-hormone or pro-hormone that's been proven in research to raise the testosterone levels a little bit so if you're deficient in any of these things you get get your body where you need to be where you're not deficient any longer it can make a little bit of a difference. Now, if you're medically low, under the 200, is it going to raise you up to optimal? No, most likely not. But every little marginal gain that you can get or correct can make a little bit of a difference and they can build up over time. Now, if you're close to being optimal or you are there, but you want to maintain it, these are some things you need to take into account. But if you're extremely low, it's not going to get you there. Now, the last ones we'll talk about will. Um, lose excess fat. Adipose tissue has an aromatase expression and puts off estrogen. And when your estrogen levels are higher, it lowers your testosterone. So if you carry a lot of excess fat, you have a lot of excess estrogen, which is lowering your testosterone. So if you can lose it, you can raise your testosterone level that way. Now for women who are menopausal, they get all their estrogen from the adipose fat. So that just shows you how powerful the adipose or the aromatase expression from the adipose fat is when it comes to estrogen. Um, those four things can, are marginal and they're not going to help you get there optimal if you're considered low, uh, but they can help. The next few things I'm going to talk about are, have a much better or uh, much more benefit to them, have a greater effect, and the last one has the best. And I'm going to share some stories about my own personal experience. And again, these are just stories, they're anecdotal, they're not medical advice, it's purely anecdotal. Uh, but one thing that you can do to raise testosterone levels is weight bearing exercise, especially the legs. Now, this is effect is a temporary uh, because you know the day that you do the workout, you do like squats or deadlifts and doing a lot of legs, leg extensions, whatever. Uh, it will raise your testosterone levels and your human growth hormone levels temporarily. So there's no way you can work out legs every day. So this isn't a permanent fix, but it can help that little marginal gain. High intensity training. The way we suggest it in our clinic, especially for patients, we don't do high intensity training every day. It's high intensity training will raise your cortisol levels, which will lower your testosterone if you're doing it way too much. So if you're doing 30 minutes of high intensity training or 45 minutes, you're actually raising your cortisol, you're reducing your body fat, you're burning more calories, but you're actually not burning fat and you're lowering your testosterone. So if you do high intensity training right, you can actually spike your testosterone and human growth hormone without which and that without affecting the cortisol that much. And the way you do that is only doing high intensity cardio twice a week, about every three days, and you're only doing it for about 10 or 12 minutes. So you're only going to get that high intensity heart rate, you know, you're at your max for two minutes out of 10. So two or three minutes warm up and you build up, hit a, a max, come back down for one or two minutes, go back up, hit a max, and you're done. I mean, you're literally done with your high intensity training in, in about 10 minutes. And what that does is that spikes your human growth hormone for about three days and without affecting the cortisol too much, and it raises your testosterone. You know, like I said, the weight training, legs, and high intensity, those can help actually quite a bit more than the first few things I talked about. 
but again, it's a temporary. Uh, another big one, and I'll tell you a personal story, is stress. You have got to lower your stress. Stress affects testosterone levels a great deal. Everybody's different. And you know, I didn't really believe that because a lot of times we're going through stress and we don't realize it. But here's my personal story. I was when I, before, when I started testosterone therapy, I was going through a divorce at the same time. Actually, I started therapy, then I went through a divorce right after. And the dose I was I had to get to a certain dose to get to the level I needed to be to feel good. And once I got through that divorce, is like six months later, all of a sudden my testosterone levels just went through the roof. They jumped over 500 points. Nothing else had changed. Dose hadn't changed. Nothing in my life changed except. I guess I'd gotten over and got through that stress of that divorce and my testosterone levels jumped so they had to lower my dose. So stress can affect your testosterone levels. So if you are living under a lot of stress and a job that you hate or a situation that you just can't stand or you're going through a life event like a death or a marriage or a move or a new job, it's going to affect your testosterone levels without a doubt. And you just need to be aware of that. So you need to learn how to manage that to get your levels as up as high as possible. Or if you're feeling the symptoms, you need to talk to your doctor about the life event. We do with you know the uh, heart providers do with their, their patients. You know, talk to them about anything that's changing in your life, and we make adjustments based on that. So stress can definitely help or hurt your testosterone levels. Now the last thing I'm going to talk to you about, without a doubt, has been proven in research to raise human growth hormone as much as 2,000% to raise testosterone levels in men, uh, to balance hormones in women. So it's fasting. And I'm going to give you my personal story about fasting and what we have seen in the clinic as well. Um, when I fast, for I'll give you an example. When I was fasting, everybody's a little bit different, so you're going to have to kind of play around with it. But fasting is going to raise your testosterone, can raise your testosterone level. But as soon as you stop fasting, your testosterone level is going to drop. Let me give you an example. We had, in my personal case, I came across this research from Dr. Um, I can't think of his name now, but Dr. Fung, Jason Fung, it says it raises the testosterone. I said, well, let me just start testing. And we tested this over a year and a half. So I started fasting and I fasted for 12 hours a day and then we did my blood work. And what I would do is I would fast 12 hours a day, uh, Monday through Friday, and not fast on the weekend. And my testosterone levels didn't really change. Well, I started fasting 14 and 16 hours a day. Well, my testosterone levels jumped like 300 points. And <clears throat> so they, you know, we adjusted my dose. And I started fasting like 18 hours a day. And it jumped up more. And then I started fasting 20 to 21 hours a day. Sometimes even 22 hours a day. I would, again, I would fast Monday through Friday for 20 to 21 hours a day. And I would eat typically around lunch, you know, on the weekends. And my levels jumped over 700 points when I was fasting 21 hours a day. So when everything was said and done, we had cut my dose in half by fasting 20 to 21 hours a day. So fasting has been shown in research to work, raise testosterone levels. And in my personal experience, it raises it a lot. And I was able to cut my dose in half. Now, the bad thing about that is, as soon as you stop fasting, typically, you know, within a week or so, your levels are going to start to drop back down. But it's when you fast, they will raise back up again. So if you can, if you're a marginal, maybe if you're low, medically low, let's say you're 250, if you can raise your level 600 points, or 550 points by fasting, and you fast say, maybe 18 hours a day, Monday through Friday, not on the weekends, but get your levels up where you need to be, that may be all you need. Or uh, if, you, if you can fast 20 hours a week, I mean 20 hours a day, Monday through Friday, you can get them up in the optimal range and not have to be on medication. Or if you say you're close, say you're borderline, and maybe you can fast Every other day, you just have to kind of play around with it and do your blood work to find out. But fasting definitely raises the testosterone level in men, balances the hormones in women, and raises human growth hormone tremendously. So fasting is one of those things that absolutely will work, can work, but you just need to play around with it and test it, check your blood work, 
and see how it affects it. So if you can go into a lifestyle fasting, and I did for two years, um, and you can fast consistently, you can keep your testosterone level high consistently. And the longer I fast, the higher my testosterone level got. And it's still the same way now. I quit fasting a few weeks ago, and my testosterone level dropped like 700 points. So I'm back to fasting again. I mean, we're always testing this and playing around with it. But fasting, if you can work that into your lifestyle, that can dramatically change your testosterone levels. And again, if you're borderline or getting close and you can start fast a few days a week, you may get a level high enough where you don't need to be on therapy and get rid of all the symptoms. So it's something to look at, something to try. But this is the truth about what works and what doesn't work and how you can raise your testosterone levels naturally. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call, DM us, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Have a great day.